In our history, you know, it is, uh, in fact, even lately it has become even more common for people to be lynched. And people have been lynched for a variety of reasons, you know. Uh, yes, somebody even gets caught stealing a policy like packet and has been lynched. There have been uh, lynchings uh, when it comes to uh, upper caste, lower caste uh, differences and things like that. But, you know, this one stands out because uh, the man in the picture who's begging for his life and who's covered in blood, uh, uh, he is not a criminal, you know, uh, he was just passing by an area, uh, he was passing by a rural uh, portion of Charkhand and uh, there was a rumor in that area that some travelers are going to abduct uh, children uh, from that area and uh, a fear psychosis set in and uh, what happens is that you know people whom you know people whom you have come to trust like your mama chacha masa mosi and when they start telling you that you know look your children are going to be abducted be very careful you know there are these people who are passing by this area and they are going to abduct your children and possibly worse things can happen and um, that is when you know and uh, we have to remember that you know uh, a lot of these people had no way to verify this information, uh, but they were being told repeatedly because this went viral, and multiple people were telling them that your children are going to get abducted. And uh, that is what led to a fear psychosis, and that is what led to seven people being killed. Um, he was one of them. The people who are standing around him are not hardened criminals. The man who is begging for his life is not a hardened criminal. But at the end of the day, seven people are killed and 20 people are facing a murder charge. And that is purely because of a WhatsApp rumor. You know, a WhatsApp rumor has ruined the lives of 27 people and probably more, uh, the families, etc. So, that, so you know, we, we have truly arrived in the age of fake news and uh, this image that happened uh, this year is a testimony of that. But how is that we arrived here? You know, how is that uh, uh, rumors, etc., have become so uh, dangerous that it has started to kill people? Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, we have a huge number of first-time internet users in the country in the past two years. What has happened is that there's been a telecom war that is going on in our country for the past several years but especially the past three years and uh, with the arrival of Geo, uh, multiple companies have dropped down their mobile data rates and as a result the consumption of mobile internet data has risen many folds. According to statistics uh, in the month of June 2016 we as a country were using about 200 million GBPS of data per month and that increased to a mind-boggling 1300 million GBPS per month in March 2017. That's an increase of six and a half folds. And I don't think there are many countries, uh, you know, who have seen such an increase. Along with that, uh, there's another set of statistics which says that, and these are 2016 statistics, which says that uh, the rural internet usage has increased by 22% year on year, while the urban internet usage has increased by 7% year on year. Now, you know, if you look back at what happened in Jharkhand, this 22% figure is a very, very important figure because uh, there is a significant section of our population who are probably not even aware that there's a website called www.google.com. You know, uh, while inter internet is an uh, enormously empowering medium, you know, it, it gives you access to unprecedented amount of information. But the flip side is that, you know, once, you know, if you are a first-time internet user, if you are somewhere in rural Jharkhand, and if you have, if you are told that your child is going to be abducted, you have neither the tools nor the education to verify this information. You know, if if you are told that uh, that uh, Hindus are killing Muslims in your area, Muslims in your area, Muslims are killing Hindus in your area, and a video lands up in your WhatsApp inbox, uh, again, you neither have tools nor education to handle that situation. Uh, while, you know, uh, people, you know, uh, people are trained either by education or just by the profession, you know, there might be uh, somebody who's working in a field and he's perfectly 
capable of thinking critically as to how to deal with his crop, you know, when to sow his seeds, when to irrigate, when to harvest, and, you know, how to take care of certain situations, you know, if there's early rain, what to do, if there's late rains, what to do, you know, he, that person is perfectly capable of dealing with his field. But give the same person a smartphone, or even a feature phone, you know, these days you get feature phones for as less as 1500 rupees, where you, you get WhatsApp and Facebook inbuilt, and you give him a feature phone, you give him a data pack, a data card for 50 rupees, you know, which, which almost gives you multiple GBs of data these days. And now uh, the same person is uh, subjected with a deluge of information, you know, there are videos coming, there are images coming, there are WhatsApp forwards coming which claim that, you know, uh, if you eat this, you won't have to go through a bypass surgery, if you eat that, you're going to get fairer, and so on and so forth. So. So, the problem is, and you know, one of the reasons why char can happen is that, uh, and this is not limited to just rural areas, uh, even in urban areas, we see that in our family WhatsApp groups. We see the amount of fake news that, that goes on in our family WhatsApp groups. Uh, it's a lot of people, elderly people in the, fa in the family who have not had the kind of exposure that probably the urban youth has. You know, the urban youth, um, uh, you know, when we access internet, uh, we do a variety of things. You know, you go to YouTube, watch a video. You'd go to uh, Amazon or Flipkart and buy something. You'd go to some news channel and uh, you know read news. You'd go to Google.com and research your thesis paper and things like that. So, you know, urban youth has a holistic view of internet, and um, you know, a lot of urban youth is aware that you know internet is a medium, is a medium which is over 20 to 30 years old. So. So let's say if the same rumor uh, was circulated in Calcutta or Ahmedabad or Bangalore, you know, even though it is not that people in urban areas don't fall for it, you know, people in urban areas do fall for fake news, especially political fake news. And you know, if you have a certain political and religious leanings, you would probably believe in information that adheres to your beliefs. But uh, it it has not been seen very often that you know you. You fall for fake news and you act on it. You know, there's a difference. Falling for fake news, believing in something, and believing in to the point that you act on it. And uh, that is what becomes dangerous because, you know, there are a lot of people out there who do not have that worldview of internet. You know, they, they come from, uh, uh, from a background where anything which is a printed word on a newspaper, akbar page or chabdia, you know, that becomes the gospel truth. And uh, you take the same population, you know, who's believe, you know, uh, who's believing blindly in a 16-page broadsheet, and you suddenly give them WhatsApp, and uh, uh, many of them find it very difficult to believe what is true and what is false. And as I said, you know, internet doesn't come with a handbook. You uh, you buy anything off Amazon or Flipkart, you know, you buy even a phone, so there'll be a chota a book in there, you know, that this is how you switch on the phone, this is how you put your battery in, this is, these are the precautions you must take, you may not, you should not overcharge your battery, you know, a lot of things, you know, a lot of precautions, not many read through it, but some read through it, and you know, there is a handbook out there, there are handbooks available on the internet, but uh, internet, unfortunately, a service which is so widely used, doesn't come with a handbook, it, nobody has told you you know, how you should use the internet, what are the pitfalls, what are the precautions, and that is not something which is uh, told when somebody is given a smartphone and a 4G or a 3G data connection. So, as a result, you know, uh, we have come to a state where, uh, where internet has become extreme, you know, internet for those who, uh, you know, WhatsApp rumors and etc., they have become extremely dangerous because it is, uh, it has. It is starting to kill people. Uh, you know, not very far from here, uh, in Boshirhat, we saw that uh, a, a morphed image of a Islamic religious place was circulated, and then the minority community came down on the road, and there were riots. Now, uh, I don't think again that you know, if if that image was circulated in a urban area, uh, would that have the same ramification? You know. That is where I'm trying to draw a difference. Yes, people fall for fake news, even in urban areas, but you know, how many people act on it and come, come down on the streets and indulge in riots or whatever. So, uh, even in Muzaffarnagar back in 2013, we saw that you know, there are many subjective factors in Muzaffarnagar, but 
one particular leader put out a video from Pakistan and the riots that happened led to killing of over 72 people. <coughs> so, why do people fall for fake news? Um, again, as I said, everybody falls for fake news, even I have fallen for fake news. It's not that, you know, I have not, you know, I have believed in certain things. But, you know, typically you fall for fake news when you are, you know, you have certain beliefs and, uh, you know, you have certain belief systems in your life, and everybody does, and there's any information which adheres to that belief system. You know, in Pakistan there was a, uh, a huge issue, I've been told, of, uh, you know, there was a rumor which was circulated which claimed that polio drops, and I think this, this happens slightly a bit in India too, where it did not take the kind of proportions that it took in Pakistan, that polio drops are not good for you. And there was a large section of rural population which started not taking those polio drops, and as a result, it, it caused an issue. So, you know, that is, you know, when you're told that, you know, these, uh, the, the modern medical systems are uh, out there to cheat you, some of which is true, you know, there is a there is overcharging in hospitals, etc., etc. But, but when you take a propaganda to the point that uh, you know you start propagating that you know you should not take vaccination, you should not take this. That is when you know you start getting into a problem, and that is when people who do not have means to figure out whether something is true or not fall for it. Uh, something similar happened in Indonesia, Malaysia. Um, a rumor was spread that a particular brand of paracetamol tablet, P500, uh, has virus in it, okay? And uh, the rumor became, uh, you know, we had done a story on Alt News, and uh, we had just featured one Facebook post. That Facebook post was shared about four lakh times, you know, that paracetamol has a virus. And it came with pictures with, you know, showing people's backs with pock marks on it, you know, uh, horrible looking pictures, so people would obviously be afraid that if I take a paracetamol tablet, this is what is going to happen. It became so viral that Malaysian government and Indonesian government both had to issue advisories saying that, boss, this is not true, you know, paracetamol does not have a virus. Now, uh, the understanding that a virus needs a host body, you know, uh, a virus cannot uh, it, cannot survive on an inanimate object like a tablet. You know, that understanding probably not many people have. So once you put out information that this has, uh, you know, the, the P500 tablet has virus, and then you put out two horrible pictures along with it claiming that this is what happened, those who are not aware that a virus cannot exist on a tablet ever will fall for it. And Imagine people stopping to take paracetamol, you know, it is one of the most, you know, everybody carries it in their bags and imagine if people, you know, get so afraid of taking paracetamol that they stop taking paracetamol, you know. So that is the kind of um, issues that, that fake news creates. And uh, one of the major reasons is, you know, our belief systems. If we believe in something, whether, let's say if there's a Congress supporter or there's a TMT supporter or a BJP supporter. Now, if you, for example, uh, this was a image that was tweeted by the BJP IT cell head, Amit Malviya. Uh, if you look at a first look at that image and you think that Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru is a very bad man. Uh, but, uh, you know, that is the image that it was trying to, that they were trying to portray. If you look at uh, what is written, uh, it seems Hardik, Hardik as in Hardik Patel, who is a leader of the party, the community in Gujarat. Uh, and, you know, uh, just before elections, they put out something what, what they termed as a sex tape. And uh, then Amit Malviya tweet, tweeted this, that it seems Hardik has more of Nehru's DNA, contrary to what Shakti C. Goel claimed. And this got tweeted massively on Facebook. It, this collage was, uh, you know, was shared many times. Now, if you look at the image, the top left image uh, is Mr. Nehru getting a peck by uh, Mrs. Vijay Lakshmi Pandit. That's his sister. The image on the right, top right, is again Mr. Nehru hugging Mrs. Vijay Lakshmi Pandit. The image on the bottom right is uh, Miss Sagal, who's Ms. Nehru's uh, niece. She's giving a peck on Mr. Nehru's cheek. The middle image where Mr. Nehru seems to be embracing a woman, that is Mrinalini Sarabhai. She, you know, uh, she's a very famous dancer. Uh, comes from my city, Ahmedabad. Uh, 
she is being embraced after a performance, you know. So, but if you individually, if you look at it, and uh, we put out a story, you know, examining each one of uh, these stories. There's one of one where, you know, the bottom right, the, no, the, in the middle, in the right, Mr. Nehru is actually applying a tikka. If, if you look at the full version, Mr. Nehru is actually applying a tikka. But when you put all these images together uh, and give it a narrative that, you know, uh, Hardik's DNA is close to Mr. Nehru's DNA, it would seem that, you know, Mr. Nehru is not a very good man. But anybody who has misgivings towards Mr. Nehru and you know, there has been a constant propaganda against him. So there are a lot of uh, people on the on who, who support BJP who would probably have those misgivings and they would easily fall for it. And this goes viral. You know, this this image went crazily viral. Now, this image. This is also very often circulated on social media, and it's not difficult to say which one is fake and which is not. This is an interesting one, uh, you know, so one is, you know, so uh, the, the, there's one kind of uh, photoshopping, which is this kind, you know, uh, which is uh, basically uh, trying to character assassinate people, you know, fake news is a, has become a tool to character assassinate people. Recently we saw that uh, 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 in, you know, RJ in, in Punjab, she was stopped and Oh no, was it Haryana? I think it was Haryana. So, uh, and uh, uh, somebody from the ruling party, you know, uh, was responsible for it, a uh, kid from the ruling party. And uh, an image was put out on social media by uh, the family of the perpetrator, and uh, where this RJ is seen with two guys. And uh, it was claimed that she was with the perpetrator himself. And again, this image became very viral. It was claimed that she was with the perpetrator himself, and uh, uh, that you know she is she the, the hue and cries about nothing. She was not really stuck. You know, she already knew the perpetrator for a very long time. And then uh, we put out a story on Alt News because we spoke to her, and that was a picture of hers with some two random friends. And it was a very very old picture. It was simply plucked from her Facebook profile because she had because she was an artist. She had a very very public profile. Uh, it was simply plucked from a Facebook profile and put out. Uh, similarly, when um, Gur, uh, you know, there was a huge controversy about Gurmeet Kaur. Gurmeet uh, Kaur, sorry. And uh, a video went viral uh, where uh, you could, uh, you know, it was, it was claimed that it was Gurmeet Kaur. But, uh, you know, uh, in the video you could see a young woman and there were multiple guys in a car, in a moving car. and. Uh, there was music playing, they were having drinks, and it was claimed that she's, a, she's Gurmeh Kaur. Now, uh, you know, in, in, we are a conservative country, so a woman drinking and, uh, you know, having fun in a car with guys is looked down upon. And uh, it was with that very uh, idea that, you know, you have to somehow character assassinate this young woman, that video was put out. And if you look, if you go to YouTube.com, I can try here probably. Okay, so there are videos after videos which claim on YouTube that, and this was the video. Uh, I don't know if the volume. Okay, I would like Okay, so this video was circulated a few thousand times on social media, claiming that this is Gurmehar, and you know she's having fun with few, you know, there are other guys in the in the car and she is not a very nice person. So, you know, so, so fake news has become a means to character assassinate people. But there is also another, uh, another use of fake news. And in this you can see uh, Mr. Laru Prasad Yadav has put out a picture. And this was a recent rally in Gandhi Medan. And it was claimed that, uh, you, know, there's, you know, it was such a huge rally that it was an unprecedented success. There was not even place to put, put your foot in the rally. But when you zoom into the image, when you zoom into various parts of the image, you'll see that they have transplanted crowd, just like you transplant hair. <laughs> you know. Uh, so I'll go back, and if you look at look towards the top right, 
uh, that is the same bit that I'm zooming in, and they're basically transplanted crowd at various points and proceeds to Congress. The very next day, uh, there were photoshopped images of, uh, you know, the numbers having changed, where now it was shown that Congress is winning and BJP is losing. And that, that became very viral on social media. Uh, and there were not just one instance of fake news during the Gujarat elections. You know, the elections is the time when, which is most ripe for fake news. For example, everybody was told about Gujarat model back in 2014, but you know there was an image which was circulated claiming that this is the BRTS in Ahmedabad, but it was actually a bus from Singapore. <laughs> so uh, another couple of things which went viral during the Gujarat elections was uh, Mr. Bharat C. Solanki, who's the Congress president in Gujarat. There was a letter uh, apparently written by him uh, addressing Congress headquarters claiming that we are losing these elections. Uh, Mr. Bharasi Solangi put out a statement on his Twitter account saying that this is fake. But the very next day, another letter went viral which, was, which, which had BJP president's signature. The same numbers that were shown in the Congress but not flipped around. Showing that you know BJP president, Gujarat president is informing the BJP headquarters that we are losing the elections. After first phase of Gujarat elections, uh, as a Facebook post went viral, which claimed that th these are this is what IV is claiming as to how uh, various parties performed in the elections. One one set of numbers showed BJP is winning. Another set of numbers showed Congress is winning. So essentially, what I'm trying to say is that. You know, yes, in 2014, probably one party took the lead, but uh, now we are entering a phase where every party is doing this. Uh, probably more so from one party, but, you know, unfortunately what has happened is that nobody has taken the lead to stop this menace. You know, nobody has... Uh, and when that happens, when one party starts setting the narrative uh, using fake news, every other party will come in and we'll have just a deluge of fake information. Now, something like this, you know, how, I mean, if uh, this shows, uh, uh, this, is, this is by a Congress volunteer, uh, and he has put out a picture claiming that uh, Mr. Modi is shaking hands with Hafiz Said. Now, if that had actually happened, it would have been on every international newspaper, you know, not just national dailies, but every international newspaper. But somehow, you know, that is why I'm talking about confirmation bias, you know, you are from Congress and you think that this actually happened while well, you know there's no way this happened. The the one on the right is even more interesting uh, because this was also tweeted by Sanjay Jha who's the Congress spokesperson. He, uh, he retweeted this image and uh, where it shows uh, Mr. Rajnath Singh uh, sitting on a sofa and it'll, it'll seem that a police officer is touching his feet. These are the actual pictures. Uh, the one on the left is Mr. Modi shaking hands with Nawaz Sharif, and the one on the right is actually a still from a South Indian film. <laughs> and yeah, Mr. Rajnath Singh was basically photoshopped into it. But, you know, these kind are okay, you know, these kind cannot really create much problem. But this is one, uh, this is Vijeta Malik, she is a state executive member of BJP Haryana, and when Boshirhat riots were happening, she put out this image claiming that this is a Hindu woman who's being molested in Boshirhat. Okay, and these are the kind of things, and this was not the only fake image which was circulated during Boshirhat. There were at least three fake images circulated during Boshirhat, and uh, all teams put out a story about it. This was one, uh, uh, by the way, this is actually a move, still from a movie called Aurat Khilona Nahi. It's a Bhojpuri movie, and uh, you know, uh, uh, still was, and it's supposed, I have not obviously watched this movie, but it's supposed to be a pro-woman movie. <laughs> and uh, basically they, they took out a still and, uh, uh, and claimed that, you know, it was a Hindu woman being molested in Bosheta. Now, these are, the, these are the kinds which actually, you know, are very dangerous because you're already in a state of riots. Uh, you're already there people who are you know, angry and out there on the streets and then you put out this video, you essentially are putting, you know, chalk into tail, basically. Uh, more recently, uh, and this is not in the presentation, uh, a boy called Paresh Mesta, uh, was his, his dead body was found in a district in Uttar Karnataka. And uh, India Today, which is a mainstream media organization, very, very mainstream, they put out a tweet 
claiming that he was castrated, he was burnt with boiling oil and what not. And the last sentence said, will Paresh Mista's murder shake the country? Each one of the claims that India Today put out, and these, were, these claims are not in quotes, these were claimed as if they are factual. You know, uh, just sometime before that, uh, a Congress MP, I think she's an MP, Ms. Shoba, I forget if she's an MP or MP, but I think she's an MP, but she put out a tweet claiming, making the same allegations that this is what happened with Paresh Mista, that jihadis did this. India Today put out the same tweet without quotes, you know, basically ratifying the allegation as absolute truth. And then it became so vital and riots, you know, there were already, uh, you know, riots going on in that area. And then police had to, uh, they, they put out questionnaire to the, because the final postmortem report was not out there, you know. Uh, uh, these, the story was circulated with the body of Parish Mesta. Unfortunately, Parish Mesta's body was found about two days, two, three days after they went from water. So there was a huge level of putrefaction that had happened. His face had blackened. Uh, so which is why it was easy to make those claims that, you know, he was born, burnt with boiling oil and things like that. And uh, so the situation became so tense that the police had to put out a questionnaire to the forensics department in Manipal University. They're doing the postmortem. The postmortem report, I don't know if it is out yet, but at least when we put out the story, the final postmortem report was not out yet. And it was a longish questionnaire, 20, 20 questions out, where, you know, they clarified that, no, he was not burnt. No, he was... Uh, not castrated, you know, no, he was, uh, you know, they claimed that there was a ohm uh, tattoo on his arm and it was claimed that that was taken off and the the hospital, the forensics department had to clarify that no, that was not taken out. So, you know, it is not just social media which is involved, you know, now even mainstream media is contributing to this issue of fake news by, simply because of sensationalism. You know, they, they want the eyeballs, they want the eyeballs, and uh, uh, that is where, you know, uh, the existence, you know, this increase in digital age has not just afflicted, you know, the rumors on social media, but it has also, uh, you know, it has also uh, basically affected our mainstream media companies where their inherent business model is, is, in conflict with the art of fact checking, you know. Uh, I'll give you a simple example. So, uh, recently what happened was that uh, uh, Snapchat CEO, you know, multiple media organizations, this includes Z News, ANI, uh, uh, Rajasthan Patrika, News 18, Aaj that they all claim that Snapchat CEO said that uh, they don't want to expand into India. Snapchat is an application, as you all, you all of you might know. They don't want to expand to India because India is a poor country. When you look at international coverage, and uh, Indian media covered it on uh, April 16th, international media covered this on April 13th. And this was already out, out there, this information was already out there, but you know, the actual claim, actual issue was that an employee had filed a lawsuit in a court and in that there was one sentence where the employee claimed that Snapchat CEO stated this in a closed door meeting that uh, we don't want to expand to India because India is a poor country but uh, our media very cunningly changed that and attributed that statement directly to the Snapchat CEO nobody knows whether he said this or not this was a claim in a lawsuit so and as we know uh, the fever of nationalism what happened was that in four hours, Snapchat's ratings in the app store went from four star to one star. And the funny thing was that, uh, if you remember, you know, there was a ordeal with Snapdeal. You know, Amir Khan's wife had said certain things and then Snapdeal had to face a backlash. When the Snapchat things happened, there are some people who went on to Snapdeal's app and I said, and stated that I know you guys are not Snapchat, but I'm still giving you a one star. <laughs> So, yeah, so what has happened, and I'm sure there are journalists here who can probably elaborate on this as to why this malaise is affecting even uh, mainstream media, but I do believe that most sections, when they make this mistake, it is not because they want to, but purely because 
you know, uh, in the age of digital, me uh, digital media where, uh, you know, a lot of readers have shifted to digital media. In the US, a huge number has shifted to digital media, the print, you know, the print newspaper, uh, their numbers have fallen drastically. Now the revenue on digital media, you know, think, think about a time which was about 15 years back, let's say uh, Hindustan Times does a breaking story, Indian Express can respond to it only 24 hours after because there is no way to do anything, no way to reach out to the people in those intervening 24 hours. But now let's say somebody does a breaking story, then anybody can put out, you know, quoting at least, if not as a direct story or adding a few elements to the story and push out news on their websites. And because there's a huge number of people who consume news online. But what also that, and so which is why now a huge, you know, the, uh, ad revenue, online ad revenue, whether it is via clicks or by impressions, there are two ways uh, these websites make revenue. Let's say if you view an ad X number of times, then they make revenue, or if you click on the ad, then they make revenue. Now, your revenue is dictated by how many people click or view that ad. That is dictated by how many people come on your website. That itself is dictated by how soon you can push out a news which is sensational. You know, a news uh, like this, uh, how soon can you put out a news like this so that more and more people come to your website and eventually end up clicking on the ad. So the very business model of online news is uh, in contravention to the to the to fact checking, which is which should come with with you know journalists are supposed to fact check that is their business. But because you have to put out news as fast as possible, and even a few minutes of difference between one one media house to another media house will lead to difference in revenues, uh, is making people send out push out news without any fact checking. This is one example, and I'll tell you why I posted this example because it's absolutely ridiculous. So not just this three, but at least 10 media organizations claim that uh, Mr. Cohen got, uh, you know, 3.27 3 Twitter followers on day one. Uh, CNews claimed in a few minutes and Republic uh, claimed that it got 3 million followers in one hour. The fact of the matter is that Mr. Pranam Mukherjee, who was an outgoing, who was the outgoing president, already had those followers. <laughs> they already had those followers and all Twitter did was transfer these followers to Mr. Cohen. Now something as ridiculous as this, as simple as this, you know, so many media, Times of India, so many media organizations got it wrong, you know. So essentially fact checking is out of the window. If there is something so sensational, you know, that Mr. Cohen got, you know, because, uh, you know, Mr. Cohen got so many followers in one hour and then everybody will click on this size and go there and click on the ads, you know, because anything sensational flies and that is what will dictate your ad revenue, you know, which is why Republic uh, featured Ritik Roshan and Kangana Ranaut for one whole week. They did not talk about any issue, but what is happening between Ritik Roshan and, Ritik Roshan and Kangana Ranaut for one whole week. So, you know, that is one of the reasons why fact-checking has gone out of the window even for mainstream media organizations. So, how is it affecting us? It is affecting our electoral choices. Uh, you know, uh, these rigged polls, you know, the Photoshop polls, the Photoshop letters and things like that. They are primarily aimed at uh, shaping public opinion during elections so that people vote in favor of one party or another. And, you know, as we have seen now, no party, you know, one party might have, you know, have started early, but now every party is doing the same thing. Polarization of opinions, you know, the amount of Hindu-Muslim videos that are out there, the amount of cow slaughter videos out there which are from other countries, you know, um, all these are, is leading to extreme polarization and uh, we'll, we'll soon see, you know, what sort of polarization that is happening. And after, of course, law and order issue, we saw that in Boshirhat, we saw that, saw that in Jharkhand and so on and so forth. So, you know, before I go to this section, uh, I'll quickly show you guys uh, how do we debunk news, you know, how is that and how, because, you know, at this point in time, uh, the number of people who are debunking news on social media, they are very small number. There's S.M. Hoxley, uh, uh, he's, he's a one-man army, he's Pankaj Jain from Bombay. There is Boom Live, uh, which is part of Ping Networks, and I think there are four people and they're also based in Bombay. 
and there's all news. And uh, this is specific to social media rumors. I'm not saying that you know mainstream media has completely abdicated their responsibility, but especially social media rumors. You know, there are not many people who are looking at it. And at Alt News, we are two full time and two part time. So essentially, in a country of 1.3 billion, there are about nine people looking at social media rumors. So. Yeah, so basically some more help in this direction would definitely be useful and I'll show how we, you know, we debunk certain uh, basic social media rumors, how to go about debunking certain basic social media rumors. So let's say this is the image that you get on WhatsApp, you know, claiming that this is a Hindu woman <coughs> who is being molested in Boshirhat. And now how do you figure out whether this is true or not? So essentially in fact checking, and now what, what has happened thankfully for us is that Google as a search engine has indexed hundreds and thousands of images and these images are not limited to just these images. You know, when, whenever somebody puts out a video uh, on let's say a platform like YouTube or Twitter and so on and so forth, about five, six snapshots of that video uh, as advertised by these platforms are also indexed by Google. So, uh, you know, as far as images and videos are concerned, uh, our endeavor is to basically hit upon these images that are already indexed by Google, whether these are snapshots from a video or individual images and figure out what context were they originally shared in. So let's say, uh, and we can look at number of examples. For example, this happened, you know, Boshirhat riots happened in July 2017, in the early of July 2017. Now, if I can prove that this image existed on internet before July 2017, that means that this image cannot be representative of Boshirhat riots. You know, that is essentially the endeavor. So what you do is you go to images.google.com uh, uh, and Google has this technology called reverse image search. Uh, you see this camera icon on, on the right hand side of the screen. You basically click on that. Now, uh, it gives you two options. It gives you upload an image option where you can upload an image. Let's say if you had downloaded that image, then you will just you'll opt for upload an image. Or image URL. Let's say for example, if you receive this image on WhatsApp, uh, I'll show you, you know, how to do it on a mobile phone as well. There's a slight trick to do it on a mobile phone. Uh, but you, in that case, let's say if you receive it on WhatsApp, then you typically want to go to upload an image, choose a file, and then from your image gallery, you would pick up that image and do the search. Okay? But uh, since here we are on the desktop and we already have the image URL, we'll just pick up this image URL and we'll put it here. <coughs> okay, so you get multiple search results. Now what we want to do is we want to narrow down the search to a specific time range because we want to prove that, we want to check, not prove, we want to check whether this image is representative of a certain event or not. So what we'll do is we'll go to tools on the top right, on the top right you see tools and then we'll go to time filter. Now this time filter allows you to choose whether to limit this search for the past one hour, past 24 hours, past week, past month, past year, and there's a custom range option where you, you know, where you can give a free range. So from is the date from which you want the search queries to start, to is the date where you want the search queries to end. So in this case, we don't care for the from because the image can be as old as possible. You know, that is not what we're concerned for. We are concerned for two, that is we want to figure out whether this image is older than uh, Boshir Hath Riots. So let me pick up a date uh, which is prior to Boshir Hath Riots. So let's say 15th May 2017. We know that that is definitely before Boshir Hath Riots. Okay, and we get a bunch of search results.
So, so you know, okay, let me go back for a second. So here you, you know, in Google it gives you, when, whenever you start, you know, when you use a time filter, it will give you the date when they see, when that particular website. Uh, we want, if you go further, you see this uh, website called Aurat Khilona Nai, which says November 21st, 2014. Okay, if we open that, I think there's another website as well. <laughs> So for example, this website, there's this bhojpuritrade.blogspot.in and it has a blog dated August 16, 2014 which says Nari Atyachar ki vyatha, aurat khilana nahi, bhojpuri film jagat mein kuch gine chune film ka hi hai jinke film mein samajik sarokaro ke ird gird ghumdi hai. So, uh, you know, we clearly see that this image is, was posted on this blog on August 2014, so it cannot be representative of Boshe Hatais because it has been posted on internet three years before. If you look at this, you know, it says that this is part of Aurat Khilona Nahi, and if you go down further, uh, this is the image, this is the still image, which was part of that movie Aurat Khilona Nahi. So, uh, this is one of the very basic techniques that we use, and you know, it works at least 80% of the times. And what you do for videos is that you use the same technique, but then you need to split the video into images. So uh, you can use a tool which is called uh, MP4 to share the converter. Yeah, so uh, there's a website called download.cnet.com and which has a tool called mp4 to jpeg converter. And you basically download this software, it's a free software. And uh, uh, you, you, know, you download a video, uh, let's say you have it on WhatsApp or something. Even there are apps which can do this conversion, but it's easier on the desktop. You download this, install this, and you upload, you know, you browse, you click on browse file, and you give it the video. It will this is Elizabeth McCord, our Secretary of State. You run it in government. Yeah, so if you download the video, and, uh, sorry, download the software, and give it a video, it will break it up into individual frames. And then, let's say, for example, there was a image, uh, there was a video which claimed that, <laughs> so, for example, this video, okay. out by a account called Shankna. Uh, this is this account is a repeat offender and has put out multiple fake videos and images. Now it has been claimed that uh, you know Indian Muslims are celebrating Pakistan's uh, win in Delhi. This was right after Champions Trophy. Now uh, this became so viral that Baroda City Police, because this this video was originally from Baroda. And uh, Baroda City Police had to put out an advisory which says that Varudra Shahar Police Dwara Janhit Majari, as in, you know, this is a public announcement. Athi Shahari Janone Janavanu Cheke Tarik Adhar Chho Bhaja Satana Roj, social media Dwara, Bear Bike Savaro Pakistana Dwaj Saman Dwaj, there are the video viral thayoto. So essentially, what they're saying is that you know, there was this video uh, which was viral in which uh, two people were. Uh, where uh, you know they were using a 
a flag which resembled a Pakistan flag, but uh, but the video is actually from Eid Milad in December 2016. Okay, now um, if let's say if you you know uh, the when we first debunked this issue, I came across this Baroda City Police advisory much later, and if you look at uh, the number of likes and shares, you know 354 likes, 213 shares, and it is in Gujarati. Now this video went viral, not just in uh, claiming that this is from Baroda, that uh, you know this uh, this, but it also you know then the location starts changing. Uh, we have seen multiple times when fake videos are circulated. It's the same fake videos circulated with different narratives, different false narratives. So this was initially claimed that this is Indian Muslims in Baroda. Then it was claimed that these are Indian Muslims in Delhi. Then it was claimed that these are Indian Muslims in Bihar. So you know the narrative kept changing. Uh, but unfortunately, if you look at what happened, Baroda police did a good job. You know, it is not that you can, uh, and uh, you know, I have had uh, a lot of experience even with you, you people is, uh, recently where, you know, mainstream media there like Uma, Amar Ujala and Jagran have put out fake news, have called up you people is, and they have been very, very supportive in terms of, you know, giving information as to what was the correct news. So it is not that, you know, uh, the police department are always sort of ignoring these issues. They are uh, looking at these issues, but the problem in the specific cases, it is in Gujarati. How many people will understand Gujarati? Because fake news is not a local phenomenon. Fake news is a national phenomenon. And uh, fake news gets translated to a variety of regional languages. Uh, the same video, you know, you, you, you have Hindi subtitles or, you know, sort of Hindi markings or then markings in other regional languages. And it got shared only 213 times. While the... Places where this video was posted, they got shared thousands and thousands of times. So ideally what should have happened was that once Baroda police put this out, it was the job of mainstream media. You know, just like when you have a weather advisory which claims that there is a cyclone which is going to come, mainstream media puts out that information that, you know, do not go to these areas. We are expecting a cyclone. We are expecting some sort of disturbance. So kindly do not go to this area. In this case, had the mainstream media picked this up, first the Gujarati media, because uh, Gujarati media would have the first access to it because they would understand the language. And then hopefully the mainstream media, if they had just put out this information that, you know, there is this video which is viral where it is being claimed that these two people are celebrating uh, India's win, uh, over, sorry, Pakistan's win over India in Champions Trophy. And these are, it's a fake video. You know, if that information had gone out, this video won't have become so viral. Let's say if radio channels had put this information out, because radio channels have an even greater reach than WhatsApp. You know, All India Radio has a huge amount of reach. We hear Man Ki Baat every month on that. <laughs> so, uh, so had they put out that information, uh, you know, probably the video had, would have gone viral. But unfortunately, not even the local media picked it up. So, you know, there are multiple gaps, you know, you can't always sort of uh, accuse the law enforcement agencies, you know, our media agency, our media organizations are also failing at various levels. But let's say, you know, if we want to debunk this, you know, uh, uh, when we debunk this, I was not aware that what Baroda police has put out such an advisory. So in that case, In that case, what you do is you download that software and uh, if you go to Google and say download Twitter video, you'll get multiple websites which will let you download videos. Okay, so you, you take this link essentially. download the video, you, you take that software, you feed the video, downloaded video to that software, it will break it into uh, multiple frames and then you use the same same thing that we did with Google reverse image search, the same thing that we did with the uh, image which claimed that a woman is being molested in Boshikhat. But in this case, uh, in case of video uh, or in case of any images, what you have to be careful is that you can't just throw any image at uh, Google, you know, for example, uh, for example, you know, this is a still from that same image. Now, there is no definitive object in 
in this still. You know, you can see a part of the bridge, you can see a part of the flag. And if you throw this image at Google, Google will not find anything. Okay, what you need, well, you know, so what you want to look, look for is something which has a definitive image. For example, this still, you know, where you can see clearly see and it, you know, it is not 100%. You'll have to try this multiple times. There's a lot of trial and error in this. But uh, if here there's a definitive object where you can see two people on a bike, you can see them holding a flag. When you put this image uh, in the Google reverse image search engine, then you can expect much better results. If you just put out something like this, you know, where you, you put out a bridge, now Google can't figure out whether this bridge is in uh, <laughs> Calcutta or this bridge is in Baroda. You know, if only if there is a definitive object in the image can Google figure out. So um, these are a couple of ways of how to deal with uh, how to deal with fake images and fake videos because that is the biggest problem. Uh, now I'll briefly touch upon you know another kind of fake news. So you know the kind of fake news, these kind of fake news, they are not. They are, there's no financial incentive in the sense that you know, you put out a video on WhatsApp, it's not going to get you any money. That is purely f has a political intention. Uh, but uh, there is there is now a new genre of fake news which has a which has a business model. You know, recently be before Trump elections, uh, before America elected Mr. Donald Trump as the president, there was a bunch of websites uh, which came up, and surprisingly, this came up in a country called Macedonia, where one kid started putting out, started cre created a website which is a pro-Trump, anti-Hillary website. Now, what happens is that when you create a create a U.S. facing website, is that every ad click gets anywhere between fifty cents to five dollars. You know, if, if it's an India facing website, if if Indians are clicking on clicking on the ad, similar ads get anywhere between five cents to fifty cents. But if you make a U.S. facing website, these ads get anywhere between fifty cents to five dollars per click. So you know, they started creating this. It was election season again. Election season is ripe for this kind of news. Everybody you know has an appetite for political news and. One kid created this fake news website and started earning lots of money and multiple people in that city started doing the same thing. It became a business model. <laughs> and uh, to the point that now, I think there's an article on BuzzFeed which shows you know how much money they made. They made thousands and thousands of dollars and they basically rigged the US elections. So uh, now that business model has carried forward to India. and. Uh, so uh, I'll look. I'll show you a couple of websites that we debunked. <laughs> so uh, this is a website called Hindutva.info. This is one of the older websites, uh, you know, specializing in the art of fake news. For example, they they you know when the mainstream media was focusing on the left versus RSS. Uh, conflict in Kerala, they put out a video which was from Mexico and claimed that uh, you know a person being stabbed is a member of RSS and a me member from the left is stabbing this member from the RSS. Originally a Mexi Mexican gang member. Uh, somebody in Bihar got suspended due to corruption charges. Some random woman, she became Ravish Kumar's sister, Ravish Kumar from NDTV. Uh, <laughs> And uh, the, you know there was a video which went viral right after Pelu Khan was murdered in Alwar. You know he was a dairy farmer and he was uh, he was lynched in Alwar. And uh, uh, we have very often noticed, though we don't have any evidence to show that you know fake news is an organized effort. We have very often noticed that you know after certain political events, for example, the one that I just highlighted. You know Indian uh, Indian media concentrating on the left versus RSS. Uh, conflict and boom comes a fake video. This uh, this video of Hindu being killed by Muslims in West Bengal was at the time when uh, Pehlu Khan was lynched in Alwar and uh, the parliament was in session and it became a huge issue and this video claimed, uh, I'll quickly open this this video claimed that Vahari Gandhi media Rajasthan mein Muslim Marato Hindu Atangwad, Pashim Bangal may Hindu Marato cover bine. This video ko koi media nahi the kaigi, nahi Congress, Vipaksh, Sunset, Sadapar, Hangama Karenge. Chalis Gayoko Katne Kelie 
जाते गौ हत्यारे की हत्या पर संसद में कांग्रेसी और विपक्ष के सभी सांसद छाती कूट रहे हैं तो सीआरपीएफ जवान बींग किल्ड इन कश्मीर बाय कश्मीरी स्टूडेंट्स दिस वन वाज अ लिटिल ट्रिकी टू डीप ऑन बिकॉज़ वी ट्राइड अ लॉट ऑफ रिवर्स इमेज सर्चिंग बट इट डिड नॉट वर्क देन आई आस्क्ड अ फ्रेंड ऑफ माइन टू ट्रांसलेट सर्टेन कीवर्ड्स इन बंगाली बिकॉज़ आई कांट रीड राइट बंगाली सो दे ट्रांसलेटेड सर्टेन कीवर्ड्स एंड देन वी गूगल सर्च इट एंड वी केम अक्रॉस दिस वेबसाइट कॉल्ड कुमिला ठाकुर कुमिला इज अ डिस्ट्रिक्ट इन बांग्लादेश एंड दे narrated that you know this this incident happened in kumila essentially uh yeah so sometimes fact checking can be a little tricky uh this was one of the cases but going back to you know hindutva.info now these are the kind of news that uh, these these websites put out and uh, why do they put out this news so we we you know one thing that is common with all these fake news websites is that most of them uh operate under the cover of anonymity you know uh, you know for example who who runs the times of india group you know the jain brothers when it jain and so on and so forth you know uh, that who was recently bobby gosh was recently the editor of hindustan times you know the going cars you know who you know who's running indian express and so on and so forth but uh, when it comes to these fake news websites you'll never have a clue as to who run it so you know one thing that we do as part of all news is to debunk you know to figure out using basic internet forensics of how to you know who runs these websites i won't go into those internet forensics right away because they are slightly complicated but i want to show you the show you a video so this is that guy who runs this website his name is rajesh jindal and i'll i'll play this video namaskar hello mera naam rajesh jindal hai main ek professional blogger hu जिसकी ऑनलाइन रीच अभी 20 करोड़ है और मेरी वेबसाइट पे एक करोड़ 20 लाख से डेढ़ करोड़ लोग हर महीने पढ़ने आते हैं सो दैट नंबर 1466 दिस इज अ ऐप कॉल्ड गूगल एनालिटिक्स एंड दोस आर द कॉन्करेंट विजिटर्स ऑन हिज वेबसाइट सो एट दैट वेरी सेकंड around 1500 people you know whenever this video was shot and you know the screenshot was taken 1500 were people were on a, on the website at that very second that is a huge number for a small website aaj main kisi pe dependent nahi hu main kahin se bhi baith ke apne laptop se apna kaam kar sakta hu aur duniya ki top advertisement company mere sath kaam karti hai दुनिया की टॉप एडवर्टाइजमेंट कंपनी मेरे साथ काम करती है सो यू नो एड क्लिक जो मैं बता रहा था वहीं से पैसा आता है कितना पैसा आता है वो अभी देखेंगे और पैसा सीधा मेरे अकाउंट में आता है एक आदमी को और क्या चाहिए सो यू सी दैट फिगर ऑन द स्क्रीन That is thirty-two thousand five hundred and forty-four dollars. That is a huge amount of money, and that is what in that month. Now, uh, and I'll show you that you know after all news did a story, the traffic went down. But that is how that is a kind of mind-boggling amount of money that these guys were making just uh, from fake news. You know, they are essentially content creation engines. They put out fake news. People come to their websites, click on ads, and they make a lot of money. After all news did a story.
<coughs> so Alexa.com is a website which measures uh, traffic statistics using a variety of tools. So after we did a story, you know, their traffic has come down. Uh, they were, they had a huge amount of traffic at one point of time, but after we did a story, their traffic has come down. But, yes, thank you for the claps, but there's a problem. <laughs> the problem is that, uh, so, okay, so before going into, you know, how do they manage to get so much traffic, you know? Uh, so what they do is, What they do is, you know, you look at these Facebook pages, multiple Facebook pages. All of these Facebook pages, if you go to these Facebook pages, for example, I don't know if it'll open, but... Okay, so you see that, you know, you see uh, images of Bobby the World, etc. Uh, there's a lot of... But then there'll be a hindutva.info link. Can you see that hindutva.info link on the top of the page? Yeah. Uh, they also run a page called Virendra Sehwag Fan Club. Uh, so they'll share all these images, uh, you know, which... Now again, you'll see a hindutva.info link. So what they do is... They create these themed Facebook pages. I love Indian Army, Hot Desi Girls. Uh, these two are the most popular themes, Indian Army and Hot Desi Girls. And uh, uh, then, of, of course, Bobby Deol, Virendra Sehwag, and so on and so forth. So they'll, they'll create these themed pages where uh, they, they are very smart. They are creating this organic, organic following. So one will be religious, you know, where people, you know, some Baba, etc. They'll create a page for that. One will be uh, I love Narendra Modi, one will be I love Ajit Dhawal, one will be I love Virendra Sehwag. So, you know, those who are in sports, religion, politician, different categories, uh, create theme pages and then put out links for one website again and again and again. So, uh, what we'll see is that, you know, after all things did a story from yet another website, their traffic came down, but soon they came up with a new domain and using the same organic reach that they have already developed, their traffic jumped in no time from zero to a huge number. So, uh, so there's this other website called Insist Post. Okay, so for example, uh, these guys, they run a bunch of websites. Chaskatimes.com and many of you might not even have heard of these websites because you know these don't sort of go around in our social circles, you know. These go around, go around in different social circles, so we may not, we don't even come across it. But for example, this story that they have put out which says that uh, I was 16 years old, so I did a sex with my father. Now, uh, this picture that they have put out is that of Mahesh Bhatt and Alia Bhatt. Okay? So, I don't have to tell you that it's a fake story. Uh, but, so we figured out, you know, we, we again investigated and they do a bunch of these fake stories. We investigated who runs this. There's a guy, a guy called Ankit Pandey who runs this. This is a guy, you know, this was his LinkedIn profile. And after we did the story, he pulled down his LinkedIn profile. Uh, he's seen with some very interesting people. The, the guy on the right is Ankit Pandey. Uh, this is Ankit Pandey again. And the guy on the left is Ankit Pandey again. Uh, so, and this is their office in Noida. I put out a smaller picture because I have other pictures where, you know, people's faces can be seen. So I did not put out those pictures for the sake of privacy. But it, this is an L-shaped office where uh, there are close to 20 people working. All young kids, you know, just out of college. And they are working in this office and uh, this is all they do. They create content and uh, uh, they create these Facebook pages. Again, uh, this one also runs multiple Facebook pages. Uh, this is the same modus operandi that is repeated across multiple fake news sites. That, uh, you know, NDTV.com can have only one Facebook page. You know, Facebook.com has NDTV. They can't have so many pages. But these people, so what they are forced to do 
or any you know in the TV India today, what they are forced to do is uh, invest in Facebook advertisement. You know, you you see the sponsored posts on yeah. Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. Because they can't have multiple identities, but these people they can have as many identities as they want because you know I don't think they care too much for morality. Um, but then you know if they, if you take them one of down one one of them down, they come out with another side. So for example, after we did this story. Uh, they also run a website called viralinindia.in. Huh? Yeah. So if you look at, you know, their traffic has tapered down. But what these guys did was they started a website called viralinindia.co. <laughs> so whatever traffic was lost there, if you look at the graph, from October 2017, they are already in the top 3,000 websites in India, which is a huge deal. Um, so whatever traffic they lost in viral in India dot in, a new entity came up and they got the traffic in viral India dot co. So, you know, you bring them down, but until the time, you know, these platforms start acting and figure out well, how do you deal with the situation, you know, you create multiple pages, you bring down one website, another website will come up. And uh, because their organic reach is already there in place, all they have to do is register a new domain once one of the domains is exposed and start putting out news in a new domain. So, yeah, so, and a lot of these people are very young people. Uh, while at this point in time, uh, it is unmissable that, you know, that uh, they do adhere to a right-wing ideology. But I do believe that, uh, you know, tomorrow if the political winds were to change, these young people are so hooked on to that quick buck that they will sell whatever is saleable. You know, if there's another ideology which is saleable, they will sell that. I don't think they'll be limited. You know, if their revenues go down this way, they will find out a way because it is such easy money, you know, and you're making so much money uh, without having to do much work in a country which where we are struggling with jobs. If you know, if you can't sell one product, you'll go and sell another product, essentially. So, yeah, so regarding fake news websites, uh, the thumb rule is that uh, none of these websites have any boots on the ground. You know, Telegraph has boots on the ground. You know, Anandabhaja Patrika has boots on the ground. You know, Hindustan Times has boots on the ground. But none of these websites have boots on the ground. Uh, websites like First Post, they probably don't have as many journalists on the ground. But whenever they, they put out stories, they'll say, as reported by Times of India, as reported by Indian Express. So they are quoting where they are getting the information from. In fake news websites, you'll see that they never quote. They never reference their stories. So the thumb rule is that if you come out with a website which does not adhere to basic journalistic principles of not referencing the stories and knowing that you, they don't have boots on the ground, don't believe the story. So. Yeah, uh, that's about it from me. Um, uh, the only other advice is that, you know, and I believe this, that everybody, even this room, there will be people, you know, you would fall for fake news one, sometime or the other. Another thumb rule is just don't, you know, because a lot of these narratives are meant to make you angry. And it, ca it can come from any, you know, this is not necessary that you know, it will only come from one party, it will come from any party, it is meant to make you angry, they want you to press the forward button, okay, don't do it, just wait, you know, there's a newspaper will come out the next day, a 16 page broadsheet, if somebody's killed in India, they'll tell you that they've been killed, so yeah. How safe is that now, because if you don't get the whole picture in that news, then it's going to be ultimately converted to a fake news and start getting viral. No, there's a, so I think there's an app for news and shots yeah, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, there are these kinds. There are also apps where which are browser dependent. You know, you have UC browser and uh, or uh, you have different kinds of browsers. There are websites which are linked to these browsers and they put out uh, they put out news. Uh, so yes, there is a issue with that where you know they don't give out a complete picture. But uh, but the other side is that people don't want to read, which is why you know. Even if we put out a story which is 10 para long, paragraphs long, nobody is going to read. People have a very short attention span, which is why these kind of websites are, you know, becoming increasingly popular. News and shots, you just give the gist and, you know, you don't give the background as to what has happened. You don't give the context.
the um, israeli police beating down i mean it's a global phenomenon it, it is not a political it is very very political phenomena and uh, and if we took it out to india we would see that it, it's it's not a very uh, a political phenomena we would see uh, rajiv chandrashekar filing a 10000 crore lawsuit on uh, wire. On, uh, wire for for uh, republic i mean we would see uh, India TV when it came out in before 2011, India TV they says that there are four holes in in earth with from where you could go to Patal, and the, how many how how many hairs are are there on Jogi Adityanath's hair? I mean this is the this is this is normalized the normalization of fake news altered news is happening throughout all media. That is true, and my uh, name is Monitra. Yeah, so so that is true, and there is a malaise that is affecting the mainstream media. As you know, as as I pointed out, you know, somebody like India Today put out, you know, uh, mythol mythology is one thing, but you know, when there are riots going on, and you claim that a um, a boy was burned with boiling oil, castrated, and all, all that, you know, that is even more dangerous. But that is also the issue with mainstream media. But at the same point in time, you know, I would still. Put uh, sort of, I wouldn't completely delegitimize them because uh, you know we do get, you know, yes, we do get the news that two thousand rupee note had a GPS chip, uh, <laughs> but uh, but on the other side, we also get you know some amount of genuine news, and you know it is, uh, you know, there has to be there's some place which where you have to validate your information. Fan of yours. <laughs> Acha, my problem is that I'm a very emotionally driven person. So when this rural people come to me, I know like this. This is what whatever you explain, it is for us. Ki how to debunk these kind of news? When I try to explain them, no, this is believe me. So please kindly tell me how do I deal with that situation? There are, मतलब there are illiterate people. I should not say that my maid or someone like that. Babi, आज ये देखा, आज ऐसा हुआ, ये हो रहा है. There were a lot of rumors. coming all the way in west bengal i had an opportunity i had a friend in kolkata police so i could you know contact him but such opportunities are not available for the larger scale of people so what do you have to say about that how do as a newspaper you know it has become the new newspaper and now only somebody who carries the credibility of a newspaper can help in this you know it is it is a battle of credibility so let's say if you know uh, you know when rumors go out which is why you know i was i pointed out to that example when baroda police put out that information it was not carried forward you know it remained in that face captured in that facebook page in gujarati unless uh, you know unless mass media comes out and puts out information you know again which is believed by uh, people at large and if if they don't start debunking this fake news then i don't know what is the way out because you know they, if they believe sorry if they believe something on whatsapp they need somebody who they also believe in to tell them that no what you believe is wrong so uh, i don't know what is the other way out there there are some people uh, who will not believe come what may what is the sort team efforts right but uh, what is the role of you know this whole uh, the machine is the internet right it is the mechanism and the way that it's being propagated so what is the role of things like uh, facebook and google and all that in debunking fake news how far are they doing it and why can't internet service providers do something more technically i'm not sound so i do not know okay so i'll address that internet service provider is somebody like jio or vodafone or airtel broadband those are the internet service providers all they are giving you is a service that you can access internet they have absolutely no role to play in this uh the net neutrality uh, discussion is a separate discussion we you know i won't complicate this discussion with that but uh platforms like facebook twitter etc they definitely have a role 
Uh, recently, I was uh, in a conference in Singapore, uh, and Google had invited fact checkers from across uh, uh, South Asia and Asia Pacific. Uh, so uh, I represented all views. Then uh, there was Boom Boom Live and SM Worksphere, and there were other fact checkers from other countries. So, for example, Google has started taking this seriously. You know, they are concerned about the. They they had four focus issues, and one of the focus issues was trust and authentication. Basically, you know, they were you know one of the focus issues was this whole menace of fake news. And what Google is doing is that. Let's say postcard.news puts out a fake news. You know, it is a uh, very prominent fake news website. Then what all news can do is uh, use a certain code. You know, Google has given a certain code. You embed that in your website and say that you know this is a website which put out fake news and this is <coughs> this is the truth. And Google will eventually figure out that you are an authentic website. And then a postcard news article will come and then there you know it will come with a warning. Uh, this hasn't really, you know, this is this is a thing which is in progress. You know, it is not really, it hasn't really happened in Indian social media. In US, it has already happened. For example, if Obama something does say something, websites like Politifact and Snoops.com, their articles will be placed right under an article where Obama is making a claim to give the other version of the truth. The the challenge for these platforms is that they also have to take care of freedom of expression. You know. Uh, they can't just start deleting or censoring information. So the approach that they are taking is to give both the views, you know, uh, to promote the counter view. That is essentially the approach that they are taking. So hopefully, you know, it will ha happen in India sooner than la later where, you know, postcard.news puts out a story and it, it was featured in Google. Right after that, you know, there's a story from one of us who has fact-checked it and found it false. Uh, that is what Google is doing. Facebook uh, is uh, Facebook India is has also re risen up to the challenge, uh, and I believe that uh, you know one thing that they are doing is they are down ranking these pages. I don't know how actively they have done it yet, but that is what I've been told. Um, but uh, there is much more desire uh, on part of Facebook. WhatsApp is a completely different beast altogether because WhatsApp has end-to-end -end encryption. There's nothing WhatsApp as a company can do either because uh, uh, you know once you have end-to-end -end encryption, uh, even law enforcement agencies can't figure out uh, as to who's putting out an initial video, which is what I was saying. You know, the the 12 standard boy in Bushirhat, he put out an image on Facebook, but he probably received it on WhatsApp. Whether he got arrested, but I don't think we arrested the person who actually created that image. You know, he's, I don't think that boy is capable of doing the kind of photoshopping that was required for that image. So, WhatsApp is a completely different beast, but at the same time, you know, uh, I have been told that multiple ministers, yes. MPs, yes. MLAs, they even do their call on WhatsApp because they are worried about, you know, uh, how safe they their calls are when they do it without encryption. And I personally do a lot of calls on WhatsApp. So, there are two sides again, you know, you want the privacy in this world where everything is constantly monitored, it has become so easy, the government, uh, you know, snoops upon you, uh, so you want, you know, you want that kind of privacy, so I don't know, I think the only solution is education, you know, when you keep telling people that, uh, and that is again, you know, uh, the role of mass media definitely should come in where as soon as something is viral and if there are bodies who are fact checking, if they can just relay the information that what you're seeing is fake, then probably, you know, it can be controlled. You know, it won't, may not go, it may not uh, get a critical uh, mass value where it goes viral, essentially. Uh, one question I'd like to ask you, if you could tell us a little about the all news, how it was formed, yes. uh, what is the size of the team, your volunteers, paid staff, how do you manage the whole show? If you could uh, tell us a little about that. Person team, two person, two full time and two part time. Uh, just in the month of October, uh, we registered a not for profit company and we did a round of crowdfunding and uh, we had a, 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 a decent response to the crowdfunding. So uh, right now there are uh, there are two co-founders. I am one of the co-founders. There's another Facebook page called Unofficial Subramanian Swami, and the admin of that is the other co-founder. Uh, we started sometime in February 2017, but the idea germinated sometime in 
August 2016, me, I'm also a member of a civil liberties organization called Jan Sangashmanch, and I walked 10 days along with my mother. My mother is a convener, and we walked under the banner of uh, Una Dalit Atyachal Lada Samiti when four boys were flogged in a town called Una in Gujarat, and many of us walked for 10 days from Ahmedabad to Una. And I documented that entire march as part of another platform called Truth of Gujarat. And uh, after that, there was a 36-day strike in Ahmedabad. We, we also have multiple unions. And uh, there was a strike uh, of Safai Kamdar because Safai Kamdar were not even getting basic health coverage. They had no permanency. So the, the main demand of that strike was that they should get health coverage. And that was a successful strike where Ahmedabad Municipal Commissioner eventually uh, you know, accepted our demand. So after that, uh, basically, uh, I'm as such a software engineer, but, you know, I uh, decided that, you know, uh, maybe uh, we can create this web portal. Me and the guy who runs an official Subramanian Swami, we came up with a concept note that, you know, uh, documenting people's struggles and busting fake news. We're already busting fake news independently on Facebook, but unfortunately, Facebook is a echo chamber, you know, those who agree with you ideologically, they sort of tend to see more of your posts, those who don't, they don't see your posts, because that is how Facebook algorithms are designed, so you know, we thought, let's put it on a website and these are the two issues we'll cover but uh, uh, documented people's struggles needs money, you know, you need boots on the ground and we didn't have the money, so we started with documenting fake news You had to introduce me? Yeah, but I'm Moni Deepa that is completely fascinating. I'm not a very digital savvy person, but my God, after Boshirhat, I was so happy that there was alt news and there's something else in Bengal itself I'd heard of, but it seems to have gone under at the moment. Now, this fake news business, uh, I have to go back in time. And I don't think any of the kids over here will remember, but some of the older people like me might. I don't know how old you are. So I have no idea if you will remember, but this was the Ganesh drinking milk phenomenon. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. You're not that old. Come on. You're a young kid. You remember that. You know, I was on the streets of Kolkata coming back from, I think, RBI after a very boring assignment. And suddenly I see this queue all over the place. And, you know, there is people queued up and there's milk going down the trunk of the Ganesh. And believe me, even I, and I'm fairly skeptical, I was completely taken aback. And I actually did a piece to camera and I, I shudder that it was so embarrassing. But I sounded very gullible. That, oh my God, it's actually happening. I have never lived that down. But I did it because I thought, and I, you know, without realizing it was going to become such a hysteric situation. And remember that was like 1995? 1995, I was in NDTV, so I joined NDTV in 1994, so it was then. There were no mobiles, no WhatsApp, no Facebook, nothing, and yet this incredible fake news hysteria. So that was my first brush with it. And the latest is, I'm suddenly working on a lot of trafficking stuff that goes on, you know, human trafficking. And uh, I've been going to one conference after the other, after the other, and I met this girl who got trafficked, you know, from up in South 24 Parkinas. And I asked her, so who's this guy who trafficked you? So he said, she said, some guy who, So somebody who made friends with me. I said, how did he make friends with you? She said, WhatsApp phone call. You know, so she got a call on WhatsApp from a complete stranger. And she makes friends with him and then he says, let's get married or maybe I'll get you a job and she just runs off. She's 17. She doesn't know better. But WhatsApp is what did her in. Thankfully, she's back and I believe the other day she actually found her tormentor. And I was told by activists that she actually slapped him twice, so which is wonderful. But the danger and the menace of this is incredible. The police are confirming that you know that your neighborhood SIM shop, they keep a phone number and the, you know the number that you go and take from him. He passes those phone numbers on to all these you know, uh, operators and they call you up and it's called phishing, March Dara. And uh, they call you and if they get lucky, you, you know, bite and then you're in such big trouble. So that's where um, technology is taking us. Thank God for redeemers like you. 
I'm very happy to hear that uh, nobody asked the question, what is the government's role? The less government, the better, in my view. But, like you said, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp is beyond everybody, do have a role to play. My question to you, how do you fund yourself? And I just saw while coming in here, are you taking donations? I also remember that Ganesh thing, uh, because there's a temple in Ahmedabad right across my house, and in the morning we saw a huge queue right there. Uh, so yes, I, I absolutely remember that. Uh, uh, I, I just want to say a word or two about the government rule and my belief in it. Uh, while, so for example, Germany has now brought in a law uh, which will uh, basically, uh, they have necessitated platforms like Facebook, Twitter, etc. that if a news is, uh, you know, it has been proven to be fake news, they are given X amount of time to take it down everywhere or else they face a financial, uh, you know, uh, they have to pay some money to the government or whatever. So, but unfortunately in India what happens is that you know, our administration, our executive, our law enforcement agencies, they become an extension of the ruling government and hence the ruling party. So very often, in your, any laws that we bring in, they are more often than not used to uh, target the opposition party. And this is again across the board. So anything which is done in a legal framework, you know, you know, let's say we bring in a law which will ask people to start arresting or things like that, that is always going to be dangerous in India because, uh, you know, and recently we had six days. So, for the, for but at least, you know, uh, what is needed and, you know, at some point in time, I don't know which government will, but at least, you know, certain basic things which is, you know, for example, uh, you know, what happened in Jharkhand, you know, these are the things where government really needs to step in and uh, and clarify that you know such a thing hasn't happened and you know I, I seriously because I have you know I've been calling I've been sitting in Ahmedabad it's not that I, I get to travel and you know do reporting from ground I'm not even trained for that but I have had a very very good response from the police in different quarters not that their word should be taken blindly there also has to be you know certain background checks that I've done but UP police MP police you know when you call them and when there are these social media rumors I think they are also overworked overburdened because of this rumors and they are uh, cooperative enough to tell you that no this did not happen for example last week in a place called something starting with V in Madhya Pradesh uh, a social media rumor went about that, you know, there was a video of a cow whose jaw was blown. And it was claimed that Muslims fed a bomb to this cow, Vidisha. It was in Vidisha in uh, Madhya Pradesh. And uh, we called the SP of that area and he told us that uh, there's a nomadic tribe and not a Muslim tribe, a nomadic tribe which goes in that area. At that point of time, it was in Vidisha and they used something called Suvarmar bomb. So basically, uh, they you know they they eat uh, pork meat and uh, and it is a pressure triggered bomb. So a cow which was grazing in that area went and bit this bomb and the jaw blasted. Then the animal activists came and uh, took the cow to the veterinary doctor. But what I've seen is that you know at least in certain cases where you know not, uh, I think the government would be hesitant when it there's a political narrative to it. You know, but at least in certain cases, which is largely apolitical, you know, the government is not really going to benefit from it. When those rumors come out, and which, unfortunately, what happens is that they get translated into various languages. At least if they can come out with a central advisory system, you know, like you have a weather advisory system, a fake news advisory system, where they say that, you know, this is what has happened, please do not believe this, you know. At least some of, if they can come out with that, it will be huge, because then the media would be more, uh, because, you know, Media is under so much pressure. If government does come out with something like that, media would probably carry it more readily than they are now. Right now, you know, they, they are circumspect about carrying out new stories. Uh, there was a monsoon, there was a flood in Hooghly. I went out there uh, to Hooghly. And uh, that day, something happened in Kolkata. A friend of mine suddenly called and said, has there been a riot in Rajapacha? So, a terrorist attack. I said, no, I haven't a clue. And I'm like 80 kilometers away and I'm frantic because nobody, I've not heard about it. So I call up the police and nobody takes a call. Nobody. 
and I'm getting frantic driving back to Kolkata. And that was the day when there was this case, which all of you will remember, where uh, some um, some gentleman from a cleric, a Muslim cleric from Bihar, went with 60 children into a railway station. You know, and there was all kinds of rumor mongering and nonsense that went on. But the rumor that I got was that there had been a terrorist attack in Rajavata. So I called up every every cop that I knew. Not one spoke. I called up the chief secretary, the home secretary, everyone. Nobody said a word. And so the rumors milled around and uh, I, you know, it's very difficult for us journalists then. And then finally, of course, I got to the bottom of it and figured out what's happened. And then, you know, I'm one of those old-fashioned journalists, belong to the old-fashioned school, which believes that when something like this happens, you do not put it out because it inflames the situation. But that day I changed my mind and I said, I as a journalist have a role in this because it's my business to put out the correct information and not allow rubbish to float around. And then I talked to the police, I spoke to the DJ and I said, for goodness sake, you have to address a new situation that has emerged There's social media. We shut up, social media doesn't. So why don't you, instead of allowing rumors to circulate, put out the truth? Sad to say, I haven't had a positive response yet. I'm very happy if Gujarat police is more proactive. Yeah, hi.